Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Irene and today I'll show you Dollar Tree Make OS. So, let's go crafting! The first item I'll be making is a candle holder. I'll be using Dollar Tree Christmas candle holders for this. These are from the last year's collection, but I think they sell pretty similar ones each year. I'm cutting a dish sponge with scissors to make the surface uneven and torn. Next, you'll need an oven cleaner, I'm using a heavy duty one. I'm spraying the cleaner on the sponge and gently dabbing it on the inner surface of the candle holder. Here you want to just blot it lightly but not to spread it all over. In these areas the oven cleaner will dissolve the mirror paint and you will end up with that aged mirror glass effect. Please wear gloves when working with oven cleaner as it can be harmful for hands. I tried to blot mainly in places where the candle holder had Christmas images on it to remove most of these Christmas trees, houses and snowflakes. Please also keep in mind that the effect doesn't appear immediately. The oven cleaner needs some time to react with the paint. Therefore, let the glass sit for about 15 minutes, then rinse it well and look at how it worked. If it's not enough, you can always proceed with oven cleaner once again. If it's not working at all, just try another oven cleaner brand. Not all of them are equally effective. My product worked much worse with the second candle holder. Apparently the paint is different here, so the aged mirror effect is much less noticeable. But I was afraid to overdo it and to remove all of the paint, so I left it as it was. After I obtained the desired look, I washed the glass as well and now we can start painting. First I'll use bronze paint. I have a solvent based paint here, but acrylic will also do here and I'm drawing small leaves. There's nothing special, just kind of pointed spots. It's very simple, so I'm not using any template, just drawing the leaves as if they are on a branch. I'm waiting until the leaves are dry and then I'll use an outliner paint. I have a glass outliner in bronze, but again, absolutely any outliner will do here. And I'm drawing the branches and the leaves veins, finishing the button. By the way, you can use homemade outliner for this, I'll leave the link for the video with the recipe of it. I absolutely love how the candle holders look now. Anthropology had candle holders with a similar design, but they are not available anymore, so I cannot show them to you. The bronze painting looks very nice on the aged mirror surface. For the next makeover, I'll be using two bowls, some glue and old candles. I'm mixing equal amounts of cold welding glue components and applying the mixture onto the bottom of a bowl. And then I'm placing the second one on top. To fill the resulting hourglass vessel, I'll use some old candles. I'm breaking the candles into pieces and I'm pulling out the wicks to use them for the new candle. You want to use a wick holder in such wide and low candles, otherwise the wick would fall by the end of burning. So I'm also using all tea candles and pulling the wick holders out of them. I'm helping myself with tweezers and a stick and I'm straightening the little tube holding a wick. And next I'm inserting a new one inside and pressing it with pliers. 
I am fixing the wigs at the bottom of the bowl with three drops of hot glue, placing an impromptu wig holder on top and filling the candle with wax. I have a small tin can for a melting box and so I filled the candle in three steps, which was actually good as I could feel the recess in the middle I got after the first filling. After the wax has hardened, I'm cutting the wigs to the desired height and we are done. I've seen this simple project on the Lone Fox channel and I really like the idea. This vessel has an interesting modern shape, you can paint it and also use as a small planter and it's a budget friendly option to get a large interior candle as well. For the next makeover I'll be using these birds with legs. I really like the legs and the birds separately, but in my opinion they don't fit together, so I'll disassemble them first. To do this I'm hitting this place where the legs are attached with a hair dryer, they are hot glued and after a couple of minutes the glue melts and the legs can be removed easily. Instead of geese I want to make cranes. First I'll need a base. I drew a sketch and cut out the contour of the bodies of three birds, a little smaller than I need, to have a margin for wrapping with self-hardening clay later. Cranes have very thin necks, so here reinforcement is needed. I'm twisting the bases out of thin wire and I'm bending them into the shapes I need. And I'm hot gluing the wire next to the cardboard bodies. Next I'll attach the bases to the legs. Here washes were welded to the legs, I don't need them, so I'm snapping them off. And I'm cutting the cardboard body a little from the bottom and placing it on the jumper of the legs, and then fixing it with hot glue. The cranes do not yet have beaks. To make them, I'll use toothpicks. I'm hot gluing them to the heads and then cutting off the excess with wire cutters. After that, I'll make the bodies. I'm taking aluminum foil, crumpling a piece, hot gluing on one side of a bird and adjusting the shape right on the cardboard. And I'm repeating the same on the other side. This is the easiest and the fastest way to make 3D figures, as you can control the shape when sculpting thanks to the flat base. And so you get exactly the shape you need and also it's very easy to recreate. I'll leave the templates in the description box as usual. After the birds have grown fat, I can start modeling the final shape. The birds have a very simple shape actually, there's no need to imitate feathers or highlight the eyes. All you need is to cover the bases with an even layer of modeling clay. Actually I'm using homemade cold porcelain here, but you can use any self hardening clay you like. I'm trying to smooth the birds so that there are no fingerprints or any beads or crevices.
After hardening, I've decided to smooth the surface of the birds a little more, as I still couldn't get rid of pits completely, so I ended up using gesso primer. This is an optional step if the birds are smooth enough, then it is not needed, but mine also turned out very yellow, so in my case it was necessary to prime them all the same. I'm rubbing in the gesso primer with my finger, trying to smooth the surface as much as possible. After drying, you can sand and polish gesso till the surface is nice and smooth. I'm waiting for the birds to dry and then I'll paint them. I've decided to repaint the legs as I wanted black ones. I primed the legs and then I just couldn't find my black acrylic paint anywhere. I searched the entire closet, but I didn't find it. So I had to use black glass paint instead. By the way, as soon as I finished painting the legs, I found the black acrylic paint in the toolbox. It's always like this with me. I can't find something and search through for it, then I speed, I come up with an alternative. And when I don't need it anymore, the thing is right here. Have you ever had this happen? In the meantime, I've painted the legs and the beaks black. I've decided not to draw the eyes for a more slick look. I don't try to make realistic birds after all. All that is left is to paint the body white and to seal the birds with a matte sealer. I really like the cranes, although I doubt a little about the black legs. In cold it would also look nice and I think the overall effect would be a little bit softer. Well, as for the shape, I'm very much pleased, given that I drew the sketches myself and I'm an awful artist. The bodies are now very proportional to the legs. This was exactly what the original birds lacked. And the last one for today is a little jewelry organizer. The first thing I'll do is I'll unscrew the mirror holders from the back side and I'll remove the mirror and the hooks. Then I've collected various artificial flowers, I've selected smaller flowers and leaves and I've ended up using hop flowers and various figs, mostly boxwood ones. Any leaves and flowers with small petals will look very beautiful here. I'm laying them around the mirror, gradually picking up the frame to my liking. I've decided to add flowers, butterflies and dragonflies to hide screw holes on the organizer and I also want to decorate the drawer a little. I'm using small insect molds and self-hardening clay here. I'm attaching all the insects to the surface with white glue. It dissolves self-hardening clay a little and it sticks better to the surface then. I'm adjusting the position of the butterflies with a stack in order to hide the holes. When I wiped the excess glue from the organizer, I found that the paint is erasing if you rub it with a damp cloth, so I've decided to seal the entire surface. At the same time, this will make the surface smoother and all the parts of it, the organizer itself, the flowers and the clay casts will have the same absorbent quality and so the metallic paint will give a good and even shine to all of them. I'm using a floor sealer here, don't be surprised, I bought it to try. 
I like that it doesn't yellow like many florist sealers do and due to the fact that it's intended for flowers, you can be sure it's really strong. This one is claimed as matte, but in fact it is more like satin, there's a light sheen. After the sealer has dried, I'm spray painting the organizer gold. Instant glam, isn't it? After drying, I'm returning the mirror back to place. I've decided to make a soft insert here so that jewelry lays on the fabric and doesn't get any scratches. I'm cutting out a cardboard rectangle large enough to fit into the bottom. Then I'm smearing the cardboard with a glue stick and laying it on a piece of fabric. I'm using purple velvet here. I'm folding the edges of the fabric and hot gluing them to place. And I'm placing the insert into the organizer. I've made exactly the same cardboard insert for the drawer. I've decided not to cover the sides of it with fabric and so I'm painting them dusty purple to match the velvet. After the paint dries, I'm sealing it and finally attaching the insert. And we're good to go! I think the organizer is a real essence now. I'll keep the jewelry I wear most often here and maybe I'll also hang sunglasses here. Well, I hope you liked today's ideas. Please let me know what you think of them. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next video. Bye!